Within Retrospect, there's a couple of ways that you can do a backup onto a hard drive. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of those options. The first thing we're going to do is click on Backup, and we're going to choose our source. Our source in this case will be the Dell folder, and we'll click OK. Then we're going to go to Destination, and we're going to create a new backup set. We're going to click Create New, and then click Next, and we have a choice of two different types of backup sets that we can use with hard drives. We're going to start by using a disk backup set, and then click Next. Then we need to give our backup set a name. In this case, we'll just leave Backup Set C as the name. Then we need to select what disk we're going to use to store our files. So I click the Select button, and then I browse. I choose the drive that I'd like to select as a destination, and then I click OK. Then Retrospect will show us the path, and it will indicate how much available space we can use on that disk. It will also allow us to specify whether we want to use a maximum percentage of disk space. In this case, we'll go ahead and leave the default, and click Next. Retrospect will give us a chance of adding security. If you're writing data to a network drive, or perhaps a server volume somewhere, you may want to add password protection or encryption to protect that data. Retrospect then has this option called grooming. Grooming is a way to purge out old files from the backup after you reach the capacity of the backup media. The first option that we see in the window is ask for a new disk. So if you're doing a backup and your destination media fills up, you can have Retrospect automatically ask you for a second, third, fourth, or fifth disk, depending on where you are in the backup process. You also have these grooming options to keep only the last 10 backups. Retrospect will do a backup to your drive, and then when it reaches a, a capacity of the disk, Retrospect will then purge out old data and will keep only the last 10 backups. So anything that's older than the last 10 backups will get purged off. If I were to change this to 5, then Retrospect will keep only the 5 most recent backups of each individual drive, and anything older than that gets purged away. If we choose this option, then Retrospect will remove enough backup data so that you can continue to backup your files. In a worst case scenario, Retrospect will keep the two most recent backups for each source drive. If that still is not enough, Retrospect will then ask for another disk in order to proceed. We click Next, and Retrospect asks us where we would like to save the catalog file. We're going to go ahead and use the default location of My Documents. And then we're going to select Finish. We've created our backup set, and we click OK. And now we can go ahead and execute that backup. OK, we're going to go ahead and select Backup, and then Retrospect will begin to copy the files. And we can see that it's preparing for the open file backup. After Retrospect copies the data, it will then compare the data to make sure it was copied correctly. After the backup completes, we can go ahead and we can look at our backup media, and we can see what files are actually on there. There'll be a Retrospect folder, and inside the Retrospect folder will be the Backup Set folder, and then a a, a member name of 1-BackupSetC. When we open that, we see that Retrospect has created a file that contains the actual backup data. Retrospect will write to these files until they reach about 600 megabytes, and then it will create a second file, a third file, and so on. In addition to doing backups using the disk backup set method, Retrospect also has something called a file backup set. So we can go to Backup, Sources, excuse me, Destinations, and we'll create a new destination. And we're going to select File as the backup type, click Next, we give our backup set a name. Now, this window will actually ask us where we want to save the catalog file. Well, the file backup set is a little bit different. It contains the actual data and the catalog file as one piece. So you actually will save this to the destination backup media instead of saving it to your catalog files directory. So in this case, we can go ahead and browse, and we can go to our backup device, open up that backup device, and then save the catalog file in that location. After the catalog file has been saved, we can click Next, 
Next, and then Finish. When we go to the actual backup media, we're going to see that Retrospect has placed a file on the disk called backupsetd.rbf for Retrospect File Backup. Now when the backup takes place to this backup set, Retrospect will write to that single file and update the catalog file as one continuous piece. If the backup media fills up when you use a file backup set, it will not ask you for a second piece of media.